Hey, Geometry Nation. Mr. Mitchell here coming to you from room 124. Topic today is surface area. Here we go. Surface area. Okay, but hold on. Read my poster for a second. I think it's here. Education is not the learning of facts, but the training of the mind to think. So my target audience here is the folks who have been racing through this work. I want you to slow down a little bit. I've got a few less problems on this assignment for today for surface area. And I want you to slow down and make sure you take in the concept that is coming today, a different one. Same shapes are in the picture here that we've been working with, but we have to change our mindset to think about surface area, which is the addition of all of the surfaces on a three-dimensional shape into one total number. Like if I had to paint a house, I would have to calculate the surface area of the walls that I need to paint, add all those together before I go to the paint store and purchase one gallon, three gallons, the five gallon bucket. Surface area can be useful. Slow your roll. We're almost to the end. We're working on the material for the last test of the year the last test and lots of us are tired so we can do this I'm gonna take away my picture okay here comes a demonstration surface area let's move these two over you know move this out of the way and this guy is familiar because mr. Scott used it to discuss to discuss volume he actually removed this red insert and then filled it up with cleaning solution to show you volume as a concept well this red insert shows you the concept of surface area this square prism can be broken down into flat surfaces and this piece helps us understand so there it is, the general shape. And now I have what they call in geometry, the net. And this net is made up of six shapes. It's a six sided square prism and it has six shapes that make up the walls, the top and the bottom. Two are squares and are identical and four are rectangles. And I'm going to say there's more than one way to do surface area. More than one way to come up with the sum total of these areas together to represent how much surface area would constitute that square prism. For just a moment, I'll bring in our reference card on surface area. Okay, so surface area, lateral surface area would be the side of something, and total would be the total number you need. And this has lots of letters, P's, H's, B's, big B's, little R's, little H's, L's. Okay, hold on. Let's try today with a methodical approach. If you are the person who is living and dying by that green card, I do recommend that you try the formula version, but what I'm going to try to explain is kind of piece by piece area of this one, this one, this one, this one, plus the area of this one and this one for the total. Maybe you can see that I could calculate this area as one rectangle, this piece. That is how the green card would have you do it. And then two squares. I'm going to start with piece by piece. Okay, so in the room, I recommend that you get the assignment, the green card, if you think that's going to help you, and then pencil and calculator. Teachers, pause if you need to do so. And I will tell you that I am going to work one problem or maybe two from these categories. Uh, I'm not gonna stop for a teacher check and an additional problem, but in my class, I'll probably go around and maybe do another one. Okay, here we are. Surface area 
and nets. So maybe you want to give yourself a note. The net is like the skeleton. It's like the skeleton of a 3D shape. Okay. When it comes to identifying each solid given its net, I am going to say that we should do some drawing here. And this is going for deeper understanding. Draw it. Try to draw what the shape would look like when reassembled into a solid. Okay, so I'm going to bring in... I think the the cylinder is maybe the easiest one to understand first. Okay. So a cylinder. And here we have the blue cylinder. All right. The net of a cylinder includes a circle on top and a circle on the bottom. And then when you expand the parts of the cylinder into a net, you have what turns into one long rectangle makes up the walls, the side of the cylinder. So I'm going to try to draw this one. There's space around these. So I'm zooming in on number four. Okay, so I'm just going to try to draw. Let's see. Uh, as if I was looking from the side at a cylinder. And I wouldn't be able to see the back of the cylinder. So those would be hidden lines. And then it would have some walls that I could see from the side. So I've taken the net and reassembled my cylinder down here. The question says, identify each solid given its net. So that is the answer, cylinder. This one depicts a cylinder. But drawing it will help you understand it. And then let's just take stock of the parts. I have a top. There's one of those. I have a side. And there's one of those. And I have a base. Okay, I'm not using bottom. I'm using base as we did with volume as a term. There's one of those for a total of three sides. Identify each solid given its net. This is a cylinder. I've drawn it. And now I've kind of tallied the shapes that would make up the surface area for that cylinder. To take this and go back to rolling it up, putting the top on and the base. And now we have our cylinder reassembled. Okay. Good job, team. Because we're getting into some different solids here, I'm going to try a drawing with this shape. Okay, so bases, the two that match each other here. All right, these look like rectangles. Those are the two shapes here that are identical. Uh, I'm going to use this as my, there's a top and there's one. Sides, one, two, three, four. So sides, I have four, and then a base. If I folded this in like a tab, I would have one. And if I total that, I have six. So six areas could be added together for the surface, the surface area. Now I'm going to try to draw it with hidden lines. Okay, it's kind of a small rectangle, so I'm going to make my picture kind of big, but all right. And maybe I can see the top. Okay. Uh, leading down from the longer edge of the top is a rectangle. It comes down here, there. Um, on the side, I would be able to see this from my point of view, and I could see this one. There is one of the kind of narrower rectangles there. And then there's aspects that have to be hidden lines if this was a solid. 
I wouldn't be able to see these in the back. So I'm drawing in the full three-dimensional shape. What is it? Because this is a rectangle. Long answer to number five. It is a rectangular prism. Okay. Taking stock of all of the shapes that go into it, there'd be six rectangles that I might have to account for differently. And I have this shape that would come back together. All right. So take a moment and turn your page over and look at number seven. Sketch the net of each solid. Ah, before we get to the numbers, we're doing some sketching, a, an important part of geometry in my opinion. And then label the measurements given. Okay. Let's start with number seven, which is a cube. I know because I see a base area that would be here. Uh, base times height for a base, nine times nine, and then it is nine high. I could calculate my volume from just those numbers. Nine times nine times nine is my volume. But my base area, I mean, excuse me, my surface area is different. Let's take stock of what we got. In the past, we've kind of colored in the base. Okay, so I'll start with the base. I have one. Uh, a cube has one, two, three, four. I'll try to put a dot in the middle of each one. Okay. So there are sides. And there are four. And then there's a top. There's a top to this cube. Okay. So my surface area would be the combination of six cubes. I'm going to try to draw it. Okay, if I open this like a box on one hinge, I am going to have a square, a nine by nine square. Uh, below that square would be the sides. And there are four of them, and they are attached to each other on the side. So I'm going to draw another nine by nine here. And I'm going to start putting others next to it. And hopefully in the room there are some example nets for you to kind of stare at for these different shapes. But there would be four sides. One, two, three, four. And then my box would have a bottom, the base. And so I could draw in one more square there. And if I fold those back up, like we did with that red shape in the beginning, it would boop, boop, wrap these around. It would recreate the three-dimensional cube. Label the measurements given. Well, this one is going to be super easy. This is a 9 by 9. Uh, the base is a 9 by 9. And then this distance here is a 9. I could even add up the total 9, 18, 27, 36 and realize that in the sides of this shape, this is another version of it. It's a 9 by 36 rectangle. Here is the same as here. Sketch the net of each solid, label the measurements given. So my cube unfolded. Its surface area is the combination of all these numbers. Okay, there is lots of room on this document to draw. So I'm using the entire section here. And I'm going slow to make sure I understand the concepts. Okay, I'm going to come down to number nine. Mmm, chipping away at problems here. And this, like, the first thing I ever saw in my life that was shaped like this was a hat box that ladies carry to protect their Sunday best 
hat, their church hat, and they keep them in boxes that are sometimes hexagonal. That was the first one I ever saw. Okay, around this shape, uh, okay, so it's nine units of length tall, the distance between the two hexagons. And then each of these panels is 13 units of length around. And it shows me the apothem for the hexagon, the regular hexagon, is there at 11.3. So I'm going to try to freehand it, and I'm going to start with lifting the top on the box. So let's go for a hexagon. There's my hexagon. Uh, let's see. I've got an apothem. Attached here is one of the panels. If you lifted the top like a lid, you would have an attachment as a rectangle, if Mr. Mitchell drew a good rectangle. And then there is one, two, three, four, five, six total. So I'm going to add the others. Let's see. Let's put one on over here. That's okay. There's four five and six six panels on the side of this hexagonal prism and then there's another one you know it the net hmm, it doesn't have to attach here i'm going to draw mine down here so here is my second hexagon also with an apothem that is sketching the net of each solid. Now label the measurements given. Okay, so I like this arrow technique. 11.3, kind of keeps my image clean. 11.3 units of length is both apothems. Uh, how tall the, the height of the prism is this measurement, that is nine. Each rectangle on the side of the hexagonal prism is 13. All of these are 9 by 13 panels. And we would have to add up 9 by 13. The last measurement we need is, well, to do the area of a hexagon, you need to maybe put this on here too. The 13 for this length is the same as each of these. 13 is the sides of a hexagon. Sketch the net. I strongly urge you to take your time with this because when you get into the math, I perceive it could go easier for you. Okay, teachers, I've flipped over to number 14 on the third page. Here we go with calculating the surface area. Find the surface area of each figure. Round your answers to the nearest tenth if necessary. Oh, boy. And I'm starting with this one, this little wedge of cheese here. Okay, here we go. I hope your information this year has accumulated and you see what's in this picture. I'm going to help myself by drawing a net. I have two triangles, top and bottom. And I have each side of the triangular prism. There are three of them. And they are rectangles. Okay. I'm going to start with this line, this nice label, six miles here. I'm going to try to draw myself a small one right here. I'm going to open up this like the lid of a box. Okay, it's shorter on this side than it is on this side. So that's this triangle as if the box was opened. Open the box and you would have a triangle. Underneath the box is, or the lid of the box is a rectangle that is six by four. So I'm gonna draw that in. That's the seam here. Uh, the bottom of the box could include a triangle here and there. 
Okay, the hypotenuse of the triangle is this six, and it is the longest side. Okay, so I'm going to add this piece, uh, two by four. Hmm. There is a rectangle there. And this front of the triangular prism goes here. There is a picture of the net. Okay, I'm going to use another version of it to do my math. I'm going to leave this one here as like a template. Now I'm going to draw a bigger version down here. Okay. Starting from the left. This is this piece. Two by four. Two by four. Four. Then comes the big rectangle in the middle. Longer, still four in this dimension, but six here. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the inside. The panel in the front, almost as long, drawn there. This is a five and a four. Now we have our two triangles, one here and one here. I have information that tells me the height of this triangle with an arrow, 1.6. I need the combination of one, two, three rectangles and two triangles to calculate the surface area of this shape. Okay, so I've got the height of the triangle here, and its base is 6, because this is where the 90-degree mark is. Okay. There are formulas for a triangular prism and its surface area, but I just think of it this way. I need these two triangles, and I need one, two, three rectangles. So here we go. 4 times 2 is this one. That is an eight. Uh, the one in the middle, six times four is 24. Five times four, the one on the right, is 20. The area of the triangle, I have to calculate it. A for the triangle, one half times base. Six is the base where the 90 comes together, times six. times height, which is a 1.6. Okay. One half times six times 1.6 is the area of a single triangle. That comes to 4.8. These steps take multiple, or these, these problems take a few steps. 4.8. So this is 4.8 and this is 4.8. I just need the total of all of these. So my surface area is 8 plus 24 plus 20 4 oh I don't like the way I did that 8 24 20 4.8 4.8. I add those areas together in an addition. And the surface area comes to 61.6 .6 miles squared because this is an area, not a volume. So it's units squared. If I've overexplained it, I do apologize. But that's how we kind of put this story together. You need to break each shape into its panels, essentially. Find the area of each one. And then add them up. We added 8, 24, 20, 4.8, and 4.8. Comes to 61.6 .6 miles squared for the surface area. 
Teachers, Mr. Scott, Ms. Sitek, at uh, 25 minutes, that's where I would stop. I don't want to go any longer than that, but here's what I'll do. In class, I am going to do one from the next page. Okay. I'm going to do 21 in class for my crowd because I think a trapezoid is kind of a challenge to picture. In this video, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody right now. You may hang up if you like, but I'm going to keep working and I'm going to silently do this one. So you could either play a second example in class that comes to an answer in the end and let it roll silently, or you can cut it now and start working on the assignment. So that's where I'm going to end. I'm going to start writing here and do a complete workup on the surface area for a trapezoidal prism. Y'all take care. Folks at home, here's another example for you. I hope you're doing well.